Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The Land of the Living Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. A net of death has been thrown about a little group of San Franciscans by the ancient Chicota priests of a far-off jungle temple in South America. Robert English, young archaeologist, was killed. On the advice of Mrs. Roberto Santos, Spanish-American woman familiar with Chicota mysticism, the condemned group is secretly fleeing to the protection of an old monastery hidden in the jungles of Chile. The party includes Dr. Julian English, noted archaeologist, his daughter Judith, and Captain Friday and Skip Turner. The monastery in the Chilean jungles is kept by monks who are fighting the tremendous power of the deadly priests of the living dead. Tonight, the group, including Mrs. Santos, is aboard ship, seven days out from San Francisco. The craft is in a heavy fog that has clung to the ship during the whole passage. The vessel, headed for La Jolla, Chile, moves cautiously through the murky atmosphere, continually sounding its deep-throated whistle. What are you trying to do, Skip? Go over the side? In this fog, we'd never pick you up. Oh, hi, Captain Friday. Yeah, I reckon I was leaning too far. Man, this fog's sure thick. No worse than it has been. Yeah, seven days out of San Francisco, and we haven't been able to see ten feet in any direction. This fog hangs on like a leech. That's kind of uncanny. Regular ghost ship. Whole week of this doggone clammy fog. Seven days of just drip, drip, drip. Hey, Cappy. Well? You think there's anything in this here gorilla business? You know anybody could make a mistake in a fog like this. I don't think three people would all make the same mistake. Yeah, but a gorilla running loose on a ship. I can't think of nothing sillier. Where'd it come from? Where does it go to? Why did it attack somebody? Well, there's that menagerie down in the hold. The two gorillas with it. Yeah, I was asking the skipper about that. Seems that it belonged to a circus that went broke in Arizona. Animals was bought for a zoo in Peru. But if one of those gorillas were loose on the ship, the keeper'd know about it, wouldn't he? Maybe so. But I don't think anybody's seen a gorilla. Everybody's got nerves on account of this here fog. Yeah. Hey, hey, look, you hmm? see that, Captain? Where, Skip? I don't see anything. I swear I saw a shadow like a big ape. Where? Not ten feet away. Right over yonder. Hey, Captain, wait for me. We'll soon prove that you're just seeing things. You got a gun? You bet you. Then come on and look out who you shoot. Yeah, just as I thought. Not a sign of your gorilla or anything else. Well, I saw some. Ah, just the movement of the fog. Yeah, here's a couple of deck chairs. Let's finish our cigarettes before we turn in. <sighs> Captain, do you realize it's just 11 days ago tonight that we walked through the fog in San Francisco to Dr. English's house? The night Robert was killed? 11 days. It seems like years. We've been in the fog ever since. Man, them last four days in San Francisco was a little rugged. The day of Robert's funeral, that blanket of fog was so blame thick you could cut holes in it. We didn't do nothing but sit around and wait. <laughs> Wondering if an agent of the Chicota priest was sharpening a knife for us. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah, kind of gives me the willies. Now that same fog's following us to sea. <laughs> you uh, suppose them Chicota priests has followed us to sea, too? Yeah, I've wondered that myself. Hey, how you explain that brotherhood of the living dead stuff? Quiet, Skip. The deck of a steamer is no place for that kind of talk. This fog may have ears as big as cartwheels. Yeah, but we checked a passenger list. Just the same. Let's not stick our necks out. Okay, boss. Hey, if you're finished with your cigarette, let's go down to the doctor's cabin, huh? If we stick out here on deck with this fog rolling around, I'll be seeing worse things than gorillas. Footsteps. Don't move. Can you see who it is? No. They sound human. Oh, well, hello, Dr. English. Didn't expect to see you up on deck. Oh, Captain Friday, I've been looking all over for you. Anything going wrong, Doctor? Not so loud, Captain. The thing I've been most afraid of has happened. Come to my stateroom and walk slowly. Talk. Talk of anything. Appear unconcerned. Hey, what's wrong, Doc? Is Judith all right? Don't ask questions, Skip. When I came along the deck just now, I was within three feet of you boys before I saw you. This fog may conceal anything. 
Come on, let's be moving. What do you boys say to a rubber bridge? Oh, we were just coming by for you, Doctor. Well, uh, yeah, we was just coming by. You know, Doctor, Skip thought he saw that phantom gorilla a few minutes ago. My heavens, Captain, not that. Talk of anything but that. Listen, off there to port, do you hear it? Whistle of another ship. Dangerous waters, these, Captain. Very dangerous. Where should we be by now, Doctor? Somewhere off the coast of Ecuador. Huh? We passed the SS Virginia going up the coast just before dinner. Here's my stateroom, boys. All right, now, watch your step. Close the door, Captain. I'll get the light. Hey. What a mess. Well, the place is wrecked. Huh. <laughs> Did you lose a collar button, Doc? I found a stateroom just like this when I came along from the smoking room not ten minutes ago. Whoever my visitor was, he was very thorough. He didn't miss a drawer nor a bag. Searched everything. Got any ideas, Doctor? Yes. The brothers to the living dead. No doubt of it. Then we haven't thrown those priests off the trail. They followed us to sea. Exactly. It's a little puzzling. Check the passenger list. Hey, what about Judith and Mrs. Santos? They ought to be warned. They're safe enough for the present. I left them with the ship's captain for the evening. You think they're after that map? The map the Lama and the Kang Home Ministry of Tibet gave to Robert? There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I can't imagine anyone being so stupid as to believe we'd carry it around with us. What the heck does it all mean? This means, Skip, that the fight is on. In spite of the fact that we checked the passenger list in the steamship company's report and the members of the crew... Someone vitally interested in our movements is succeeding in boarding this ship. It also means that from now on, we're on our own. We've got to keep our eyes open, and more important, our mouths shut. You want me to get a dog? Yes, Skip, please. Yeah. Oh, hello, Judah. Yeah, it's Skip talking. Oh, just a minute, Judith. Hey, Judith and Mrs. Santos have left the skipper's cabin and are coming here, Doc. Uh, hadn't we better meet them and bring them over? Don't have to know about our visitors. It's probably best that we tell them here. Skip, tell Judith we'll call for them. Okay. All right, Judith, I'll be along for you in a jiffy. No, 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 it's no trouble at all. Listen, wait for me in your cabin, you hear? Be sure now. Right. Bye. I'll go along with you, Skip. From now on, we travel in pairs. Oh, look, you boss, it's only a step. Captain Friday's right, Skip. We mustn't take any more chances. I'll try to have the room in some semblance of order by the time you're back. Are you both armed? Yes, of course. <laughs> Hey, what's that? Listen. The call of a pack, Doctor. That's the sound Skip and I heard outside your place in San Francisco just before Robert was killed. Yeah, and I heard it the same night just before they tried to get me. You see, there's no escaping them. They're drawing the net even more tightly around us. You think we should phone Judith to stay put? No. We've got to bring the women here. Doctor, there's plenty of room in your suite. Don't you think it'd be safer to give Mrs. Santos and Judith your extra bedroom for the rest of the trip? They've got to have protection from now on. Good idea, Captain. But you'd better be getting along. They might get impatient and start out alone. We won't be but a moment, Doctor. Come on, Skip. And, Doctor, lock the cabin door. Right. Hello? Hello, radio room, please. This is Julian English speaking, suite 3-2. Take this message for Lambert, British Museum, London. Yes. British Museum. Ready? Eleventh day. Apprehensive. If no word from me in 12 hours, Radio Donovan to proceed from Vista Del Mar as instructed. That's right. Sign that English. Yes. Yes, thank you. Huh? Now to put the cabin in. The gorilla. No! No! <laughs> Captain! Help! Captain Freddy! Skip! Doctor English. The door's unlocked, Captain. Doctor English must have gone out for a minute. I told him to stay here. Oh, what's happened? Look at 
this room. The work of the ancient priesthood. We're afraid so, Mrs. Santos. Dr. English found the cabinet had been searched just a few moments ago. Well, where is Dr. English? Yes, I, I know that he wouldn't have gone out and left his cabin unlocked. Well, he can't be far off, Judith. Uh, maybe he'd just gone to report this to the person. He would not make a report. Dr. English knows too well the necessity for silence. Hey, look, here's his hat. Yes. Just where he dropped it when we come in. I don't like it. I'm going out on deck and have a look around. How about me going too, boss? Remember, the doctor English said it ain't safe to go around alone. Oh, please let me telephone for help. No, Judith. If your father wanted this kept quiet, it's up to us to follow instructions. Captain Friday, I do not think Dr. English left this room alone. <gasps> oh, Mrs. Santos, don't say that. Yes, yeah. let me get that, Judith. Please, Captain. 32, Captain Friday speaking. No, Dr. English is not here. Yes? No, just a moment, please. Radio room reports receiving telephone instructions from Dr. English that a radiogram he placed with them be stopped. This is report to the British Museum. Say to the operator, Captain Friday, that Dr. English's message must go through. Now, at once, it must go through. Hello, radio room. Now there's some mistake. I'm sure Dr. English doesn't want the message canceled. Please see that it's sent immediately. I'll be responsible. Yes, thank you. The brothers to the living dead. We must move quickly now, Captain Friday. <laughs> Captain Friday, look. Here, on this piece of paper. Hey, that's blood. And here is another drop on the table. Oh, Father, Father. <laughs> Captain Friday, we've got to do something. Get hold of yourself, Judith. Hush, Senorita English. Keep your wits about you. There are secret agents of the Mayan Nahib aboard this ship. And your father has fallen in their hands. You must help us fight them. <laughs> Mrs. Altos, must we all die one by one? My child, <laughs> we are fighting the most evil thing our civilization has ever known. It is inevitable that one or more of us must die, but the price is small. Remember, we are five against the destiny of mankind. The price is small. Your father knew. Why do you use the word new, Mrs. Santos? There, behind you, Captain Friday is something I noticed when we first came into the room. See on the wall there, beside the door. <gasps> oh, hey, the imprint of a hand, a bloody hand. What's the meaning of that, Mrs. Santos? It is the blood-red hand of the Chicotas, a sign employed since the beginning of their civilization to indicate the accomplishment of a task. It means this work is finished. Oh, no, Mrs. Santos. I am sorry, senorita, but... Quiet, everyone. Skip. Yeah? There's someone at the door. Yeah, the knob's turning. Judith, Mrs. Santos, get in the other room, quickly. Come, Senorita English. Watch it now, Skip. The door's opening. It's the laugh of a madman! The laugh of a madman! The ship carrying Captain Friday, Skip, and the party of Dr. English to Chile, South America has become a death ship, fog-bound and the stealth of death. First, Dr. English vanished from his suite, and then someone in the passage outside softly opened the door. Without waiting, Skip shot through the door. Skip, stop that. Stop shooting, do you hear me? Give me that gun. Let the whole ship down on us. Yeah, but Captain, do you want him to get away? What was it? What was it, Captain? I couldn't tell. Whatever it was, partly opened the door, then suddenly slammed it shut and ran as Skip opened fire. No, I reckon I made a fool of myself. But that terrible laugh it sounded to me like the laugh of one of the Chicota neophytes. I have heard that laugh before in the La Jolla jungles. Well, I'm going out after him. Skip, you stay here with Judith and Mrs. Santos. Hey, Captain, wait. Don't go out there alone. You... Oh, he shouldn't have gone alone. My son, take heart. At such moments, we are not ourselves. You are being trained for the great crisis in your life. Your senses are being ground to a finer edge. Look here, Mrs. Santos, we're fighting in the dark now. I'm going to call the ship's captain. Wait. Well, we ain't done nothing but wait. They killed Robert. We sat around and waited, and then they almost got me. We waited again, and Dr. English disappeared. Now Captain Friday's out there on deck in that fog. I'm all through with waiting. Wait. What do you say, Judith? <laughs> well, I, I don't know, Skip. I don't know. What? You don't know? Have you then so soon forgotten your father's words, senorita? Yes, Skip. Of course I know. 
If it's Dad's wish that we work undercover and alone, even if it costs the lives of all of us. Yeah, but Judith, can't you see? We're fighting in the dark against big odds. We can't just sit and wait for the end. It's Captain Friday. Let me in. Did you find Dad, Captain Friday? Not a trace of him. Did anybody hear my shots, Captain? Apparently not, Skip. The deck's deserted. Mrs. Santos? Yes? Would you and Judith feel safe locked in here if I should take Skip with me for another look around the deck? Captain Friday, then you have found something. No, Judith. But I do want to push the search a little further. If you'd rather, we'll take you to the salon first. We will remain here, Captain Friday. Good. Now, Skip, we need a couple of flashlights. Dr. English had several of them. Do you see any in this mess? Oh, here's one. Oh, and here's another one. Right. Now, Mrs. Sanders, above all things, don't open this door to anyone. If either Skip or I rap, we'll call out. Identify ourselves. Understand? Oh, do be careful, won't you? We'll watch it, Judith. Come on, Skip. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Captain? If you have found something, I could tell it the minute you come back. Yes, I have, Skip. I didn't want to upset Judith until we had a chance to investigate. I discovered it by accident when I returned to the stateroom. Look. See how the light of that deck lamp falls on the wet deck there by the door? That dark spot? Hey, that's a blood stain. Fresh, too. Yes, blood. And I think we'll find others. I get you, Captain. The enemy, whoever he or it is, left a trail for us to follow. Yes, that's why I wanted the flashlights. Oh, it's nice work, boss. I only hope the trail don't lead us over the rail. I don't think so, Skip. Dr. English is more valuable alive than dead. Hey, look. Look, here's another spot. And another. Quiet, Skip. What's allowed? Let's go slow. We don't want to rush it. There's that thing again. Hey, what's the matter, Captain? Turn out the light, Skip. Listen. Looks like somebody's setting the stage for another murder, if it hasn't already happened. Keep still. Listen. I don't hear nothing. All right. Let's go on. Yeah, see? Here's another spot. Careful now. We don't want to run into any trap. Hey, what do you make out of that howl, Captain? You really think there's any such thing as a werewolf? <laughs> I could introduce you to a half a dozen reputable men who would swear to it. Besides that, I... Hello. Our trails come to an end. Right in front of a stateroom. Hey, you want me oh, to... Wait a minute, Skip. Let's scout around. We don't want to go making any mistakes. Uh, hey, listen, Captain, you hear that? Someone groaning. Did it come from the stateroom? Well, I ain't sure, Hold but... Oh, it's Dr. English. They've got him in this stateroom. The door's locked. I tried it. That won't stop us. Are you going to break in? Of course. Come on. Now, together. Yeah. Right. Uh. Once more, Skip. Uh. Oh. Uh. Uh. Hey, Cap. Cap, look out. It's a gorilla. Shoot, Skip. Shoot. Duck, Cap. Duck down. You're in my line of fire. Let him have it. Quick, Skip. You got him, Skip. He's down. Hey, look out, Cap. He's up again. Hey, look, he's tearing at his head. Look at those hands, Kip. They're human. That's no gorilla, it's a man. He's torn the skin away. There's his head. Look out, he's getting out the other door. He's heading for the rail. Stop him, stop him, Look Skip. out for him, he's got a knife. Hey, listen, he's saying something. Hear me. Thy servant is thy servant no more. Look, there he goes over the side. Well, good for him. Good riddance. Hey, did you hear what he said, Captain? Well, I heard he mention brothers to the living dead. He was an agent of the Brotherhood, all right. Come on, let's go have a look at Dr. English. Yeah. I got just one glimpse into that gorilla fella state room before he made a jump at me. Yeah, well, the doctor was tied to the bed. Hey, if he's dead, what are we going to tell Judith? He's not dead. Now, right in here. Doctor, Dr. English, you all right? No. Oh, he's not dead. He's... Oh, Captain. Captain, look at his arm. Yeah, it's horrible. We're fighting a gang of fiends. Yeah, help me carry him back to his own suite. Yeah. Now, you take his knees. I'll take his shoulders. Yeah, I got it. Let's get him out of this before he comes to. No wonder he fainted. Oh, no wonder he screamed. You set? Yeah. All right, and let's go. I... Oh, Mrs. Sandal. Do you think they've killed Dad? Tell me, really. Do you? You've got to tell me. I can't... St I can't stand it. Anything better than the suspense. Senorita English, <laughs> stop and think. Is not there something these agents of the priesthood want more than they desire the life of your father? The map, Mrs. Santos. The map from the Kyangho Monastery. Of course, Senorita. The map. They may succeed in killing each one of us. But if they do not recover the map of the secret passage to the sacred city... Yes, yes, I see it now. I thought you would. They know that your father is custodian of the map. 
If they kill him before they lay hands on the map, then they may never find it. Then Dad isn't dead. I know now that he isn't. But he might better be. He might better be. What do you mean, Mrs. Santos? The torture they will put him to, to make him tell where the map is hidden, will be excruciating beyond belief. The brothers to the living dead are very devils when it comes to torturing. They wouldn't. They couldn't. Wait. I hear footsteps. Mrs. Santos, Judith. It's Captain Friday and Skip. We've got Dr. English. Oh, they've got Father. Here, I'll open it. There, come in and... Oh, what's happened to Father? Is is he dead? No, he's just fainted. Yeah, clear off the bed, will you, Judith? Some cold water is what you want. Judith, lock the door again. Yes. Here are smelling salts, Captain Friday. Thanks. Skip, help uh, me rip off his shirt so we can get to that arm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there. Oh, what have they done to his arm? I told you they were masters of torture. Oh. Hey, he's coming too. Yeah, quick. I want to get his arm bound up before he awakens. Skip, huh? self in the medicine chest. Yep. Bandages, please, Judith. Oh. Oh. He will be around now any moment. I will bathe his head with his cold water. I'll be finished here in a moment. Another piece of adhesive tape, Skip. Here. There. He's opening his eyes. There, what did I tell you? Oh, Father. We've got you back. You've come back to us. Oh, my heart. Stop. Stop. Don't torture me this way. Uh, where, where am I? What? It's you, Judith. <laughs> Oh, you poor dear. Yeah, doctor. Drink this and you'll be all right. There, now. Oh, careful of that arm. Oh, you found me just in time, Captain. I, I'm grateful. No, never mind that. How do you feel? Better, I think. What happened, Dad? What did they do to you? It began when the captain and Skip went out to get you and Mrs. Santos. I, I was at the foam. When I turned around, there was a huge gorilla right in front of me, grinning in my face. At least I thought it was a gorilla at the moment. Yeah, we ran into him ourselves. Go on, Doctor. He, he knocked me unconscious. When I awakened, I was tied to a berth in a strange stateroom. This horrible gorilla thing was standing over me. At the foot of the berth, oh, it was the most grotesque, most ghastly being I've ever laid eyes on. Dad, what was it? It was a thing, uh, I suppose he was human, the thing that followed the captain and skipped the night Robert was killed. Little, hunchbacked, beady-eyed, ears back flat against his head like a, like a mad dog. Has a long face like a dog, too. He's the one who's been doing the howling. I never believed in werewolves before. The La Jolla jungles breed many such human monstrosities, Dr. English. This is only the beginning of what you will see. Then the gorilla spoke, and I know it to be a man in an ape skin. He asked me for the map, and I kept my mouth shut. After ten minutes, he and this werewolf thing went into a corner and whispered together. Finally, the wolf monstrosity slipped out of the stateroom and... The gorilla man came back to me. He had a dagger in his hand. A long, slender dagger. Oh, an old, old torture method. He made a fire and held the dagger over the flame until it was red hot. Oh, Dad. Then he bent over me and gave me one more chance to tell where the map was hidden. I clenched my teeth and waited. Oh, how awful. Then I'm afraid I screamed and fainted. Now that scream saved your life, Dr. English. Yeah, Skip and I heard it and broke down the door. What became of the gorilla man? Skip shot and wounded him. Before we could stop him, he leaped over the rail of the ship and plunged into the ocean. What a desperate crew we're up against. My dear people, this is but the beginning. Think, if they hold their own lives so cheaply, how little our lives must mean to them. Yeah, but this werewolf fella... But... Get him... You will have one of the most desperate of the Brotherhood's agents outside the sacred city. It is known that his terrible cruelties can make even death seem a 
pleasant possibility. Desperate Deeds of a Desperate Brotherhood continues next week when you will hear Chapter 3 of The Land of the Living Dead entitled The Green-Eyed Murderess Again. There will be violence and mystery and breathtaking action in the jungle village of La Jolla on the secret passage of the living dead. You are listening to Adventures by Morse.